What is up, Tang Gang? Welcome back to another video. I got a lot of comments on my last video, which is my MCAT score release video, um, about how I prepped for this big exam. So I want to give, in this video, a brief rundown of all the steps I took to make sure that I was ready for this test by test day. My personal study routine can be broken down into three major steps chronologically. The first one is to take your first ever practice exam before doing anything else. Uh, this should probably be a third party practice exam because you want to leave those AAMC official materials for the very end. The second step was content review. And I did this um, concurrently with my practice, which I got through UWorld. But you can also do practice with, uh, for example, Blueprints Practice Banks um, or even Kaplan uh, practice questions in the back of every chapter in the book. My third step was AAMC official materials. Uh, and this is the holy grail of your MCAT studying. This is gonna be the most representative uh, source of your practice, of your content review that you'll ever get. Uh, after all, they're written by the same people. Let me break down a little bit on each of these steps. The first step, take a practice exam. I took a Princeton review practice exam and it was before COVID, so you know I went to the center in person and uh, took the practice exam. This, the purpose of this is just to get yourself used to, uh, like the idea of taking a test that's seven or more hours uh, if you take, depending on how long you take your breaks for. And so you know this test kind of woke me up to what I was signing up for. Um, it kind of got me excited too because I knew I had a lot. Of room to grow. I got a 496 on this exam and while that might sound disappointing um, or you might expect me to have been somewhat disappointed, uh, I was like excited because I knew like you know this is gonna be a challenge and I was up for it. So after that first step comes content review and practice and so you know initially I was planning on just doing plain content review literally reading through my Kaplan books. I have no idea what I was thinking because, you know, within I think half a day, I realized that I was not gonna be able to read these books for, you know, more than a month. So what I actually did was I focused more on practice. You know, I, I bought UWorld um, because I heard it was a great source of practice questions. And I did a bunch of practice questions every day. I think like at least 50 practice questions um, reviewed them and used, you know, what I knew about my content knowledge about my gaps to go back to Kaplan books and kind of fill in those gaps. So, you know, this step two, which is content review, I think it should be done concurrently with practice. I should also note that within this second step, I took, um, I guess, frequent practice tests. I didn't take it like every week if I had you know, a school exam on one of those uh, days during the week, but I did try to make it somewhat consistent and just to give myself a little bit of motivation. You know, if I saw I got a lower score, uh, like a much lower score than I had gotten a previous week, which shouldn't usually happen, uh, but if, if, it, if it did happen, then I would be a little bit more motivated. You know, I would be more, um, it, it served like as a little kick for me to get back on my, um, my MCAT routine. So with the third step comes the actual AAMC practice. This is undeniably the most representative practice you'll ever get. In the previous months, in the uh, you know in steps one and two, you use third-party practice material, which was helpful. That would help you uh, determine what kind of content you might be uh, tested on. But this last step is so crucial. It it helps you understand in what kind of language. Uh, and what kind of logic will the AMC questions be testing you on? And uh, that's that's something that you know third-party companies have a hard time replicating, and that as a result you can only get from the official practice. So because this official practice is so important, it's also important that you treat it with the respect it deserves. This means that when you take a uh, an official practice exam you should take it exactly as if you were taking the actual exam. Uh, so for example, I, I would start sleeping at the exact time that I wanted to sleep uh, on the night before my actual test, which was, I think, 
8 p.m. for me because I wanted to wake up at 5 a.m., uh, use the restroom, go on my run, eat my breakfast, and be cognitively alert by my test time, which was uh, 7 in the morning. So, uh, you know, try, try to get down a stable routine that you can stick with at least, I would say, four weeks be before your exam date uh, where you use this official material as if it were the actual exam. Now, I'll also say something about the scores on these official practice materials. Um, notice that I didn't say anything about scores for the third party exams or question uh, practice questions just because I truly believe those aren't truly representative of how you're gonna do. Treat those scores, the third party scores, as um, just assessments of how you're doing, how you're studying. But these official exams, um, they actually reflect your score pretty accurately, at least it did for me. Uh, my average on these full lengths, these official full lengths was exactly, I guess it was one point below the score that I actually got. Um, and so if you saw my previous video, you, you would know that I got a 522 on the actual exam. My average was a 521 on the practices. So treat these practice exams seriously. And when you miss questions on the practice exams, um, make sure that you do everything in your power to understand the logic of those missed questions. Now that I've discussed the three general steps that I took when studying for this exam, I wanna give a broad takeaway that I think can help anyone who's studying for the MCAT. And that is don't take the MCAT too seriously for too long. Um, it sounds almost counterintuitive, but I think it's really easy to make this exam, which is, uh, granted, it is a big exam and it is a hard exam. I think it's really easy for us to make it seem so scary and like more scary than it actually is, such that on your exam day, like your nerves get to you and you do worse than you could have. Uh, so what I did that really helped me was, you know, I, I kept the MCAT on my to-do list um, every day for like almost a year, but it wasn't my top one priority on, until like two or three months before the exam. And so I think this really helped me avoid burnout. Um, it helped me treat the MCAT not as a chore, but as something that I, would, I chose to do with my time. Um, and so hopefully y'all can find a balance similar as I did uh, between your other responsibilities such as school, volunteering, um, and maybe research along with this MCAT study. And finally, one last note about third party exams and practice. Uh, don't go too deep on the analysis of why you missed a third party exam question or something like that because uh, speaking from experience, I spent so much time trying to analyze and understand um, what were at the end of the day, just badly written questions by third party uh, companies. And, you know, I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to stress over these questions because they weren't representative. They weren't uh, written in the same language and uh, format as AAMC practice materials were. So of course, use third-party materials to get your content down and organize your content review, but please don't overstress on them um, or give them as much respect or focus as you would if you were doing actual AMC official material. I hope this general overview of my study routine for the MCAT was helpful. Uh, ask me any specific questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them. Um, and if you have any video requests on uh, further MCAT study topics, let me know. I'd love to cover those in the future. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for all the support so far that you've given me in this channel. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, Tenkei.